prepare yourself to be blown away by the seismic sounds and scrutiny of... Aftershocks Podcast with Chris Aiken and Matt Hartnett. All right, here we go. Episode number six. And joining us on the podcast right now, we've got an old school veteran of the hardcore scene, and many of you are familiar with him from his days as a lead singer for Cleveland's Beatdown Kings, the Spud Monsters. And he's here to talk to us about his current band, One Life All In, and their new EP titled Letter of Forgiveness, Mr. Don Foos. Don, what's happening, man? First off, how you hanging what during this up? whole uh how you doing during this whole pandemic stuff that's going on right now? Doing great. You know, not missing a beat. Thanks for having me on, by the way, guys. Um, yeah. yeah, everything's going well. Um, I still go out and work. I, I still write music. I've written eight new songs for our next album. So wow. I guess it gave me a little jump start to, you know, get things going for the next one, you know? Sure, man. Yeah, that's great. Well, yeah, let's talk about uh, the new EP, Letter of Forgiveness. You know, uh, as we were saying before, I mean, me and Chris, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed with the sound and the uh, general direction of this record and just the band overall. I mean, you guys really have a fantastic blend of hardcore and really like a straight up driving rock and roll sound, which is great. Yeah. And, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and, and obviously there's, you know, there's just some metal splash in there as well. And, you know, it's definitely different from, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff you've done in the past, I know. Um, and, um, you know, obviously, you know, the thing about One Life All In is, you know, what's become very common now in the world of music these days due to, you know, due to the uh, conveniences of technology is that the other band members, uh, they're stationed in France. You're based here in the States, yeah. in Ohio, right? I mean, how, yeah. did, how did you guys connect it? And really, how do you make it work in regards to the distance and the barriers that come along with being, you know, stationed in two different uh, continents? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, like when the Spud Monsters would tour over in Europe, uh, Franco and uh, our guitarist Clem, they, they would come to see the band, the Spuds, you know, and uh, they were in a band called Secrets of the Truth, and once in a while their band would open for us, and they were big fans, and we just all became friends, and, you know, they asked me to sing a song on the Secrets of the Truth album, and I did, and, uh, you know, then in 2015... Franco got a hold of me and he said, hey, man, you want to sing on a project I'm doing? And, and at that time, I was like, ah, I don't know. You know, I was hardcore. Everything's just sounding the same anymore. I was kind of a little, little bit burned on it. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, it's got to be special if I'm going to do it. And I thought that to myself. So I said, send me some music. So they sent me the stuff, like three songs, and I, I fell in love with it. I thought, man, this is like straight up driving rock and roll with metal and hip-hop and all kinds of influences so i was like you know uh i felt like i could add many splashes of my own flavor to it and i did and man just it ended up being like really special and then you know they ended up getting kevin foley who used to play in uh, benighted and uh, mm -hmm. uh abbeth he was also in sepultura for some time mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we joined him into the fold and, uh, man, he really added an extra splash to our sound too. So, yeah. So anyway, they're in France. I'm here. We're exchanging songs on the internet, like all the time. And, uh, then we got enough for an EP and I flew over there, did the recording, you know, we demo stuff on the internet back and forth to each other. And then I go over there for the real recording with uh, Thibault Bernard, mm -hmm. who's the producer he, at Convulse Sound Studios in Lyon, France. So Thibault, you know, he just went in and uh, he works with a lot of death metal bands, you know, he's got like a great ear and he knows, you know, how to get what a band wants. So anyway, you know, we did that. We were only doing it as like a little project to start. And then it ended up, snowballing you know we did it we shot a music video with jeff lacy he's done some really big bands i think he worked with uh um 50 cent and uh you know a lot of the more rap r&b guys mm -hmm. and uh anyway we uh shot a video with him uh, and then we toured we did some touring over in europe and people really dug it you know so mm -hmm. here we are back with our second ep sure awesome. well, well 
Don, you you've obviously done you know different bands, and and you know certainly Spud Monster, certainly Run Devil Run, that you know this band, and you've had others mixed in in between. And you know, as a Cleveland guy, I know as well as anybody that every time you do do a band or do do a project, they always bring a different flavor to them. You know, they never, nobody ever listened to Run Devil Run and said, okay, it's just a Spud Monsters ripoff. And nobody's going to yeah. think this band rips either of the two. How do you know as an artist to, when, you know, to, to create something different without repeating what you've done? Because that's an interesting skill that a lot of guys just flat out don't have. Yeah, you know, with the Spud Monsters, the Spuds were the Spuds. We had this very unique sound where, it was New York hardcore with crossover influences and metal influences, but we had that same crunchy sound and there was always this mosh part in every single song and it was cool and it's great. Uh, after the band broke up, I wanted to do something a little different. I flew over to Austria. I did a band called In Stride, right. put, out, put an EP with them and that was a little bit different just because I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. Then... Uh, I got a phone call from Lawrence Coasters from uh, Ice Cream Records one day saying, hey, I want to sign your new band. I said, well, I don't have one yet. And he goes, well, put it together. I'll sign you. <laughs> uh, I was like, all right. So um, I was going for like an old school Cro-Mags, agnostic front, bad right. rain, something mm -hmm. hybrid. And that's what Run Devil Run was. And, uh, you know, and then I, I do all these different projects. I did a project in Germany called Lifeline with Robert Ehrenbron from uh, Boy Sets Fire. And that was like really mm. cool and interesting. That was kind of like a Misfits meets uh, H2O and Pennywise. And that did really well. We did some stuff in Europe. And um, but that was just really just for fun, a little project. But, you know, we had some fun, did some shows on that. And then, you know, the One Life All In is just like a really special project because unlike any other project I've done, I, I really just dropped my guard and said, I'm just writing from the heart. Whatever comes to me, it doesn't matter what genre I'm influenced by, you know, I'm just going with what feels right. And that's what we did. You know, I started writing, you know, a little bit out of the box and those guys were like, wow, man, this is really interesting, man. Let's roll with it, you know. Because I have so many influences. I love Fleetwood Mac and Van Halen and Entombed. And I love the Crumb Suckers and Chain of Strength, Youth of Today, Uniform mm -hmm. Choice. I have, I, I'm all over the place. Sure. You know? mm -hmm. I like Gordon Lightfoot. I'm all over mm -hmm. the place. So, and like Faith No More is one of my favorite bands. And yeah. they're like as eclectic as it gets. I mean, that one sure. song is... Yep almost speed metal and next thing you know they're doing like commodore songs you know yeah, exactly so, <laughs> I, i'm i'm down with that you know like sure. let's get let's get weird you know sure um, well and, and you know and it's an interesting thing too because it, you know and and this is a hundred percent outsider looking in and tell me if i'm wrong if i'm wrong but it almost seems like the the first release that you did the a7 the a7 session yeah is kind of you finding your way and it's, it really feels to me like Letter of Forgiveness is you found your way now. You used that that release to kind of put it all together and map out, you know, in your mind or creatively or as a band or however, what you wanted to become. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, de definitely. I, I was testing the waters a little bit. I was dipping my toe in the water and being like, hmm, you know, I wonder what this would sound like doing this, this or this, you know, and. And I was seeing that I wasn't getting that backlash from the scene. The scene was embracing it. People were saying, wow, this is really cool what you're doing with your voice. Really cool what you guys are doing musically. This is refreshing from, you know, just all the, a lot of the new metal today is just barking the whole time, you know. And it's mm -hmm. like, I, I, I like that if I'm lifting weights or, you know, beating my grandmother. Just kidding. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it, it's cool, but I like more than that. And there's only so many times you can write that same album. So now um, I'm enjoying just like going outside the box and doing stuff that's new, you know. So this it's, it's safe to assume then this is obviously not just a, a quote unquote project. This is a real band you're in. I mean, two EPs. Yeah. You said you got eight songs already written for an LP and, you know, in the vault. They're ready to go. I mean, 
That, that's yeah. I mean that's great. So I mean, so this is going to be definitely a full time thing, and this is not just a little project you're doing. Oh, it is. Every day, you know, we have like FaceTime conferences, um, uh, songwriting, you know, uh, idea bouncing, all this stuff. So, yeah, it's very serious. I was supposed to be in Europe uh, three weeks ago for the release of the album. We were supposed to do the Day of Hardcore Festival with Terror and a bunch of other hardcore bands in France. And then we were supposed to shoot our second music video for the song Sacred Heart. And, um, you know, due to the... COVID-19, uh, you know, everything's been put on the shelf, but sure. we keep writing, we keep, you know, hey, adapt and overcome, you know, we run into a, a snafu, so we gotta, you know, keep the ball rolling, and that's what we're doing right now. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and, you know, and speaking of Europe, I mean, even though hardcore music was created here in the U.S., I mean, everyone has their own, obviously, hypothesis or, or you know, opinion on where it actually originated from, but... It was no doubt spawned here, but yet Europe is really what's keeping hardcore alive these days. Let's be honest, right? I mean, I don't want to get into too much why it really is, but I mean, you, you personally have such a long history with hardcore in Europe. You know, yeah. I, I, over the you know, your career, obviously, with Spud Monsters, Run Devil Run. I mean, great following there. And of course, you're continuing that through One Life All In. What's your take on the differences between the two? I, I mean, why do you think that the passion for hardcore really is a bit stronger in Europe than it really is here in the U.S. from your experiences? I absolutely love Europe because once somebody likes a band, it's for life. You know, like uh, we still do festivals over in Europe and there's bands that I listened to when I was in high school playing on those festivals with us. I'll tell you a funny story. When I was in high school, I was in 11th grade. I went to the Cleveland Coliseum uh, to go see, I, I believe Iron Maiden was playing. Yeah, they were. They were playing. And Twisted Sister was open. And I wanted to go see Twisted Sister. I love the Stay Hungry album. Mm -hmm. So I went there with my high school buddy, Dave Namath. And if you've ever been to a show at the Coliseum in Cleveland, it's um, back then, uh, you go in the bathroom and there's piss all over the place. People puking right. all over. It was nasty. And I've always hated being around that. So I told Dave, I'm like, let's go down this corridor to there's usually a bathroom that's less traveled so we go there i go into the bathroom stall to go take a leak and i look back and there's somebody's laminates hanging on the hook right there and i see a twisted sister you know crew pass on there i'm like jackpot bro <laughs> so i grab nice. it i go come on man follow my lead i took him down i i wanted to go backstage you know so i go down to where the security is, show him the pass, you know, and then they're looking at him. And I say, he's with me, he's with me. And they're like, oh, okay. So we follow, go to the back. I'm thinking it's backstage, but there was nothing back there. The bands were down through the corridor where, you know, where the locker rooms are and stuff. So we went down there, uh, and there was in one of the dressing rooms, uh, it was the sisters there with pizza boxes everywhere and beer, and people were just all hanging out. It was like a big party going on. We, hey, we jump right in, start eating their pizza and drinking their beer and all <laughs> <Nice>. that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just hanging out, having the time of our lives, mm -hmm. man. So, you know, it's going on and on. It's a school night for me, for you know, granted, you know. So I was like, this is awesome. Then the band's getting ready to go on stage. So we kind of follow them out there. And I stood there stage left the whole show, watched everything. And I was just blown away. And I got the bug right there watching Twisted Sister. I'm like, man. I want to do this someday. I got the bug. So fast forward to 2010, the Spud Monsters were over in Europe and uh, we're doing our encore. And I call everyone on the stage. I'm like, our stage is your stage. Get up here. Help us with this last song. The song Isolation. Everyone always comes up on stage and sings with us. And we're playing in front of like 10,000, 20,000 people. All of these people are jumping up on stage. It's total pandemonium going crazy. And, and then we got probably 300 people on stage and it's Damn. ready to collapse. You know, security's panicking. <laughs> and I look over to the right side of the stage. D. Snyder's watching us play all these wow. years later. And I'm like, wow, this has come full, full circle. circle he's, yeah. got his, he's got his hand in the air and he's like, hell yeah. I was like, That's man, awesome. this rule. I remember when I was a kid and I... After the show, I saw him, and I was like, man, I told him the story. I, I, I snuck in backstage and partied with you guys. I know you don't remember, but it meant the world to me. And here I am all these years living out that dream, you know, and it's my turn to 
to rock the world, you know, and it was, it was like really cool. That's awesome, awesome man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, Don, uh, you know this, the people listening probably don't, but I have known you for decades now. I mean, for a long yeah. Time. Uh, yeah, I know I'm pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I think we both met when we were in our 20s, and I can promise you, we're not anywhere near our 20s yeah, anymore. Yeah, right. We're uh, <laughs> getting near the Social Security days, I know. Exactly. <laughs> but the one thing that I have always known about you uh, is that how you've always been extremely spiritual and extremely positive. You've always been a positive influence. And as I was telling Matt before we got started, you were always a positive guy in this town, which is not known for having positive guys. (laughs) You know, it's just not the way it works. Right, right. (laughs) But when you look at today and you look at modern society and you look at social media, there's a lot of negative shit that's going on out there. How do you, how do you as a, both a spiritual guy and a positive guy, keep your outlook going forward instead of getting dragged into it. Because even now, you know, you and I've been texting back and forth and you're still that same positive, positive guy that I knew 20 years ago. Yeah. When you look at social media, you see a lot of people, you know, doing the, Hey, look what I could do. You know, they want to be loved. They want to be adored. They want people to follow them. They want to feel important. So you see that as, a desperate, you know, um, I don't know, a desperate attempt to, uh, you know, fill a void in their heart. So when I see somebody being like that or being on political rants and stuff, people just want to be happy. You know, people complain about the president or the potential running mate against the president. And, you know, it's like I don't get caught up in all that stuff. You know, for me, you know, live happily, um, treat each other's with love, um, you know, just uh, do the necessities of life. There are a lot of unnecessary necessities in our lives that will create havoc. And I want to try to uh, simplify my life and, and then I'll be happy. Sure. Definitely. Now, do you, do you feel like, I, I know you've always kept that, that positivity in the music do you feel like like now more than ever there's a bigger there's a bigger hole out there for it because because it is such a darker time you know societally? Yeah, um, I'm I'm writing almost I, I don't want to say I'm rehashing old lyrics, but I'm I'm still singing about a lot of the same stuff. You know, there's a lot of uh, obstacles in life, and I want to try to take those hardships and show people that there's a positive way that you could work through things in life without, you know, uh, beating yourself up or without giving up. You know, it's like there's kids out there being bullied in this world, like the song Discharge on our new album mm-hmm. is a song about standing up for those people being bullied, you know, and, and mm-hmm. uniting and, and brotherhood and all that stuff. Stuff and unity. I know it sounds cliche, but it's like it needs to be said. I was writing that song and I told my wife, I'm like, I feel cliche. I feel almost like generic writing lyrics like this, but that's what's pounding in my heart. And she goes, then write it. It needs to be written. And I'm so glad I did, you know, because I, I really do love that song. I think it's a solid song with a solid message. And I'm, I'm writing stuff that's pounding in my heart now. I'm not worried about what a record label thinks about it or what the people think about it. If somebody hears our stuff and they like it and they embrace it, then man, that's awesome. But if they don't like it, you know, there's a, there's a lot of other bands out there with messages that you can embrace. You don't have to like us, you know, mm-hmm. but I hope you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, uh, John, I remember reading a while ago that you were, you were turned on to a, um, a lot of what you, you believe in, a lot of your uh, lifestyle, your faith and, and so forth by, uh, John Joseph from the Crow Mags. Uh, I know, and I know you've been obviously living like this for a long time now. You, you've got a, you know, have a book out, Raw Life, that focuses on you know the diet associated with your lifestyle. And I, me personally, I remember when I was growing up in, in the hardcore scene in New York, there was such a divide between the straight edge positive scenes and then say the you know more of the heavy you know beat down hardcore scenes. You know that weren't really engaged in the 
positive lifestyle. There was sort of like two yeah. bubbles, if you will. You know, they would, they would, yeah. You'd, you'd go to these shows. It was so, and it was a lot of violent. You know, a lot of times when these bands from the different sides were on the same bill, you'd get a lot of, you know, violence and a lot of, you know, just a lot of tension in general. You know, within the environment of these shows, I've never really understood why, except for the fact that everyone was just kind of young and angry, regardless of what you lived or what you believed in. But when you started adopting, you know, that, that lifestyle back in the 90s, you know, um, did you experience a lot of, say, you know, pushback from your peers because of, you know, your, your you know, new changes in your new way of life? Um, because I know, I mean, I know Cleveland did have a very well, you know, known uh, straight edge uh, sort of scene, obviously bands like Integrity and Confront. So mm -hmm. what, what, did, it, did it take a while for people to sort of accept the new you, for instance, within that scene? No, I, I, everybody's that's known me they know i'm pretty real you know i i've always been upfront about who i am and i've never been a follower you know mm -hmm. i you know if i really believe in something then i follow you know like i follow that standard i should say mm -hmm. and and i'm not worried so much but you know like i did have some you know like some of my friends when i stopped drinking and and all that stuff we'd be out and they'd know that i'd be the one that would be willing to go up and talk to the girls or whatever and they'd be like oh man you're no fun anymore you're not you don't drink and stuff i'm like yeah, yeah you gotta learn how to talk to the girls yourself then <laughs> <laughs> they had no game whatsoever but anyway i was just you know uh the scene has always been i i don't know i've always liked the jocks i've always liked the burnouts i've always liked you know the straight edge and I've gotten along with the metal kids, everything, you know, it's like, cause I like all that stuff myself and I never put up walls when I see somebody with long hair or with a shaved head or something. I, I just love people in general, you know, mm -hmm. cause, uh, why, why, why segregate, you know, and, uh, there's no, there's just no need to judge people, you know, cause mm -hmm. people could judge me and get the wrong judgment out of it. You sure. know? Definitely. Well, and, and a big part of a big part of to answer Matt's question a little bit, as somebody that was here, a big yeah. part of the reason that people weren't going to give Don Foos a lot of a lot of blowback was because he was the leader. He, you know, you can mention Integrity or Discharge or Two One Six or a bunch of bands that followed that sort of had that that thing, but everybody knew of the Spud Monsters in this town. This was definitely where where that started. <laughs> I don't know, you know, if I could take credit for being a leader, but I know that when I went on that stage every night, I reached out to that that crowd and I said, man, our stage is your stage. If you know the words, help me sing. I always embraced everybody. So I think that might be where I got the respect from all genres of, of music. Uh, I got the respect from all walks of life i always embraced the black person the puerto rican person you know the chinese person i i didn't see them as different or anything you know i've always been all about loving people with open arms so and uh when we were on stage too you knew our energy was high the spud monsters i just saw some video of us playing in texas the other day and i was like man that the energy man unbelievable Mm -hmm. Everybody in the band, it was just like it was nonstop for that whole forty-five minutes we were on stage. It was pretty crazy. Yeah, you didn't go to a Spud Monsters show half tired. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it, stay home because you were you were going to get run over. But <laughs> Don, <laughs> I'm curious now, man. I mean, as somebody that's watched it from pretty much the beginning, you know, I was, I I, I remember seeing you guys in the probably early 80s so you know or mid 80s somewhere in there when i was like 17 18 years old mm -hmm. and you you your career whether it's spud monsters run devil run stride whatever you've gone from being a cleveland thing to an international thing and now whether you'll acknowledge it or not you are really looked at as one of these guys that's, you know, talked about in the in the highest realm of hardcore music in general. You know, people, if you start talking to hardcore people, they will mention the Spud Monsters in the same in the same sentences as Agnostic Front and Chromags and Biohazard. You know, for for yeah. various mm -hmm. reasons. What do you think when you hear that? 
as somebody that lived the history of that? You know, I'm, I'm honored if anyone mentions us in the same breath as those bands because we're friends with those bands, you know. We just did stuff overseas. We played a uh, big show in Lyon with uh, Sick of It All. You know, I'm, I'm really good friends with John Joseph, man. He's my brother. He's the one that helped me get started in my spiritual practice. He's the one helped me clean up my life. You know, I stopped taking all intoxication back in 95. I cleared up my act, you know, and, um, you know, and I've been a thrill seeker, you know, like a bit of, uh, you know, I, I've always been the type that like, I got this bucket list, you know, like when I was young, I wanted to jump out of airplanes. I joined the army, went in the airborne. Um, I wanted to sing in a band, you know, after going and see Twisted Sister and all that stuff. And then, you know, I go to a party and I go, jump up and I grab the mic and start jumping around singing and thought, Hey, I can do this, you know? And, and, uh, uh, yeah, that, that seed was planted, you know, it's like whenever I, and, you know, when I want to do something in my life, I, I just figure out, well, what's stopping me from doing it? You know, like if I have a desire, I wanted to write a book in 2014. I wrote my first book, working on another one now. So it's like I I travel a lot, too. I want to see the world. I go out with a bottle of water, a backpack in my camera and I go. I want to see life, you know. Mm. So it's like, um, you know, to say that. You know, I'm seen as this world traveler that, um, you know, I'm mentioned in the same breath as some of these big bands. That's like really pretty cool. You know, it's an honor, but I'm not really all that worthy. You know, I'm just I'm just a regular guy, you know, mm -hmm. but I try to do extraordinary things like, you know, one time I was just like, I wonder what Costa Rica is like. I want to go surfing. And I went to Costa Rica and I surfed, you know, it's like mm -hmm. I, I just... I'm a, I'm the wonder. I got the wonder lust, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, man. Yeah. Well, uh, hey, um, I, I think we're gonna almost about a half hour here. I think uh, I'm ready. To, I, I think I've asked all I need to ask, Chris. You good? I think we're good, man. And yeah. People need to. They definitely need to know to go check out Letter of Forgiveness. Don, where should people go online to um, keep up with you and keep up with the band and get the new release and all that good stuff? Yeah, if uh, they want to get the new release, it's onelifeallin.bandcamp.com. Um, you can check me out on Instagram, donfoos108, and I'm on Facebook under Don Foos. And um, if anybody uh, is willing to give the new band, that's not even a new band, but the new release, give it a try. You know, One Life All In is the band name. Our new single is called Letter of Forgiveness, and we're real happy with it. And this new stuff we're writing right now, it's slamming. It's like really cool. It's um, everyone that's hearing it. They're like, "Whoa, we can't wait till it comes out," you know. And, and we're just now writing it. This the past five, six weeks. It's it's coming out like uh, pretty easy, you know. So we're we're stoked to drop it. Awesome, awesome. Well, great, Don. Man, it's it's great to talk to you, man. And uh, to close Thanks things out that. too, we'll we'll definitely want to pick a a song off the new EP that we'll play for our listeners here. So go ahead and give us a song you want to play. Well, seems like a lot of if, if they want to hear Letter of Forgiveness, that's a pretty tough tune. Uh, we're also very fond of the song Sacred Heart. So, um, yeah, whatever you want to play is, is good by me. But Matt and Chris, thank you so much for having me on, man. You guys are awesome. And I love the uh, interview you guys did with Chimera. That was like really cool. I'd like to hear whatever, whatever else you guys have, have done, man. It's, it's really cool what you guys are doing, man. Awesome. Thanks, Don. I appreciate that, man. I really do. Thanks, Matt. Thanks a lot. All right, bud. Nice right, talking to you, man. Take care, man. Nice talking to you. Peace okay. Out. Right, take care. Dude. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Aftershocks. For more episodes, go to our website at www.aftershockspodcast.com. Visit us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages for more news and information on the podcast. And be sure to subscribe, listen to, and review all episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all other podcast platforms. For your music listening pleasure, visit our website or go to www.shockwavesradio.com. For all comments and questions, please email us at info at aftershockspodcast.com.